Esther Saris, because also women in terms of security, they've borne the brunt of, uh, you know, this exercise, being beaten, some of them also, uh, they were kidnapped here and there. We had in Nyeri, Ms. Uh, Sheila Gidaiga, the only woman in the county's uh, uh, Senate uh, or Senate race, was surrounded, it says, the, according to reports, by about 30 men armed with batons and machetes at Bellevue Village in Kieni West. That was last Monday, I think two weeks ago. That really happened there, and they were telling her, you know, drop your bid, or we're going to really act on you. And fair enough, God, God actually had to rescue the lady because they didn't harm him, harm her, I should say. Yeah, okay, I'll tell you what. In, first of all, talking about, you know, looking at Maura saying that uh, uh, primaries are very expensive. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, with, uh, with me as and every other woman who's running for county woman representative, yes. I have 17 constituencies. So you can imagine, Maura is probably going to deal with his constituency, probably about 50 agents, polling stations. I'm dealing with 360 in the whole county. <laughs> now, this woman reps, it was actually a punishment for the woman, all right? And I think it's I, one of the things that we really have to address is when this woman goes around the entire county campaigning, when she comes to parliament, her salary is the same as the MP, the allowance, who's got a constituency, and the allowance for uh, development in the in the county is seven million shillings per constituency. Mm -hmm. So we do have a lot of issues where we really need to empower the woman. I mean, I'd like to congratulate Mishi uh, in in Mombasa for winning the ticket for the MP seat. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. I hope we're going to have a lot more MPs that have come through uh, this election so that we can actually pass bills that empower <coughs> the woman and basically the woman reps it. Now, when it comes to um, uh, the elections, uh, what, what was your question? The security. The security. security, yes. Security, let me tell you what. ODM has got fantastic structures, and I've worked through the structures of ODM, and that's an advantage. But we do have a big problem of unemployment, and this is something that us leaders have to address. So when you go into certain areas, like I wanted to go into Madare mm -hmm. to campaign, and I was actually told, sorry, if you want to come here, we need to prepare security. We need to give security from the ground. We've got to give the youth there who are unemployed uh, allowances for you to be able to walk freely through Madare. I actually cancelled going to campaign in Madare mm -hmm. because of this threat of insecurity and the, the, the extortion of money, you know, for you as a candidate, for you to go through these areas. We also had a few problems in other areas, but we managed to sit down and negotiate. And I feel that um, this is the unemployment, um, the alcohol abuse, and also um, the fact that us as leaders have let down the electorate. Mm -hmm. So when they see you, they actually feel, all right, you're gonna come here now, and after five years, we'll see you again. Mm -hmm. So let us get the maximum out of you. Mm -hmm. So they want employment and security. They want respect when you go in. And it's, it's really tough. I mean, I was going through Makadara the other day, and this group of people were really stopping the truck from moving. So what we did is we took, they said, take our leader, take our leader. We took the leader on, to, on top of the truck. And we drove off with him. And I sat with him and I said, you know, what business do you do? I engaged him in, in the, in the, on the truck. And he says, look, we do, we, we, we have um, chicken business and we have some other business that he said he was running. And I said, why don't you wait until the elections are over, vote me in, and then we see how we can help you. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to hear this. And this is something that I want to tell all the leaders that are going to be elected. Really, I know that we get frustrated during campaigns, we get manhandled probably by the voter, but this is the situation that has been caused by the past leadership not delivering. So what we've got to do is, most of them say, you'll switch off your phone as soon as you get in, we'll never get access to you, you'll change your number. Mm -hmm. You know, I really feel that as leaders, if we want the future generation to have elections that are not with so much stress and insecurity, we really need to lift people out of poverty, we need to lift people out of drug and alcohol abuse because, uh, you know, I mean, going through Majengo, it was sad to see little, little kids all intoxicated. Going through I Isli yes. to see such bad roads and such um, so much garbage, we actually are failing the citizens, and they are the ones who put us in office. It's not, it's not you and I, Dibal, that put leaders in office. It's the majority, the masses, that we are not serving very well. Mm -hmm.